We will now consider a common and very dangerous arrhythmia. The readout on this monitor is from a patient admitted to CCU following treatment for an acute myocardial infarction. The patient has just developed a potentially life-threatening arrhythmia. He has lost consciousness and is quickly cardioverted back into sinus rhythm by the CCU staff. Looking at a printout from the monitor at the time of the attack, you will appreciate that this tachyarrhythmia is quite different from those we have considered up to now. The QRS complexes are broad at over four small squares in width, that is greater than 0.16 seconds in duration, well beyond our upper limit of normal. This is consistent with an origin of the arrhythmia from a focus situated below the bifurcation of the bundle of Hiss. This is ventricular tachycardia, or VT. VT is extremely common, particularly in the setting of acute coronary syndrome, and is potentially lethal. In the presence of coronary arterial obstruction, Infarction of myocardial tissue is not generally uniform. Particularly at the margins of vascular territories, there may be a degree of overlap in blood supply between vessels, and it is possible for strands of cells to survive within the infarcted area. Such a strand of viable tissue has lost much of its cellular contacts due to the death of surrounding tissue, and for this reason, depolarization and repolarization properties may differ significantly from unaffected tissue adjacent to the infarct. You learned in the preceding videos that these are the conditions in which re-entrant loops arise and the commonest mechanism triggering VT is re-entry triggered by premature ventricular contractions. In fact, looking back at our patient's monitor, this beat represents the initiating ventricular ectopic. You'll notice that the triggering ventricular ectopic is similar in morphology to the QRS complexes of the subsequent tachyarrhythmia. You'll also appreciate that following an initial brief period of irregularity, the tachyarrhythmia is monotonously regular. This regularity is a very characteristic feature of ventricular tachycardia. In our patient's case, although not completely identical, the QRS complexes are very similar in morphology. This is a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. The monomorphic morphology of the QRS complexes indicates that each episode of ventricular depolarization is originating from one single site within the chambers and is moving through the ventricular myocardium in a constant pattern. You may have spotted this earlier event on the patient's monitor. Ventricular tachycardia is present when more than three consecutive ventricular complexes occur at a rate of greater than 100 beats per minute. This run of five broad complex beats meets this definition of VT. Such a self-terminating run of VT, less than 30 seconds in duration, is referred to as a salvo of non-sustained VT. The term sustained ventricular tachycardia applies to an episode of VT greater than 30 seconds in duration, or, as in our case, an episode requiring clinical intervention for termination. We have already mentioned that it is possible for a focus situated in the supraventricular region to generate a broad complex tachycardia. This situation arises if a component of the ventricular conducting system is damaged or fails to function at higher heart rates. Distinguishing such a broad complex tachyarrhythmia from VT is a major challenge which we will discuss in section 5. There are several features of VT which help us to make this distinction. Far from being detailed, a knowledge of these features will come in very useful. We will now deal with the most important of these features, atrioventricular dissociation. 
There is an interesting event on our patient's monitor at this point. In the middle of the tachyarrhythmia, we find an apparently normal QRS complex. This is a capture beat. The presence of a capture beat is evidence of atrioventricular dissociation. What does this mean and why is it so important? Depolarization arising from a focus in the ventricle is not generally transmitted into the atria. Therefore, in VT, the atria may remain uninfluenced by events in the ventricles, and the SA node carries on discharging at its own inherent rate. Equally, the SA node discharges have no effect on the ventricles, as the great majority of P waves arriving at the AV node find the conducting system and ventricular muscle mass refractory to depolarization due to the rapid rate of discharge from the abnormal focus. Electrical events in the ventricles and atria are dissociated. The two regions are both doing their own thing, uninfluenced by one another. The presence of a capture beat in the rhythm strip is evidence of AV dissociation because, as illustrated here, it represents a rare P wave which has arrived at the junction at a point in time when the conducting system and ventricles are in a non-refractory state. The SA node discharge therefore depolarizes the ventricles through the normal pathway of the conducting system, generating a QRS complex of normal duration. Recognition of a normal QRS complex in a run of broad complex tachycardia a capture beat is strong evidence of AV dissociation. The presence of evidence of AV dissociation is very reassuring in diagnosing a broad complex tachycardia as VT. By definition, if electrical events in the two regions are occurring independent of one another, then ventricular depolarization is not being driven from a supraventricular focus. There are two other features we can look for to establish the presence of AV dissociation, the presence of fusion QRS complexes and dissociated P waves. We've already seen that a fusion QRS complex may arise if the SA node, uninfluenced by events in the ventricles, fires and depolarization is transmitted into the conducting system just as an ectopic ventricular focus discharges. The fusion QRS complex generated will demonstrate features of both sources of ventricular depolarization. To identify a fusion complex, we look for a QRS complex which differs in morphology from the surrounding complexes of the tachyarrhythmia, and which shares features of both the normal and broad QRS complexes. Like the complexes of the tachycardia, a fusion beat is bizarre in morphology but bizarre in a different way. Although not obvious in our patient, with experience it is possible in many cases to identify P wave activity fused with the components of the broad complex tachycardia of VT. When identifiable, as in the example shown here, the P waves bear no fixed relationship to the QRS complexes. This is strong evidence of AV dissociation. The atria and ventricles are depolarizing independently of one another. There are situations in which a supraventricular focus can generate a broad complex tachycardia with AV dissociation, but these situations are rare. In practice, evidence of AV dissociation in a broad complex tachycardia strongly favours a diagnosis of VT. Evidence of AV dissociation is detectable in approximately 50% of cases of ventricular tachycardia. There are many other features which help in the diagnosis of this arrhythmia and we will discuss some of these in the quiz section and expand on this in section 5.
Our patient experienced a run of sustained VT at approximately 150 beats per minute. The rate observed in VT is variable, but most commonly runs between 140 and 200 beats per minute. The high rates achieved in this arrhythmia and impaired ventricular filling are part of the reason why it is so dangerous. However, the highly abnormal pattern of ventricular depolarization is also a major contributor to cardiovascular instability in this arrhythmia. A highly deranged pattern of ventricular depolarization may result in an equally deranged pattern of ventricular myocardial contraction with loss of cardiac output.